All right, today we're going to cover um, titrations and pH curves. Okay, so we've done lots of titrations at this point, and if we back up for just a second, we're going to use um, or define these things here for a minute. But remember, a titration in a simple world is when you have a container that typically has a known volume. Okay, so let's say we had 50 mils. All right, and typically an unknown molarity. Okay, so what you're looking for is the molarity of the solution. And then you usually have something that you titrate it with. Okay, a lot of the times we do this in a puree. Um, sometimes we just do it with a dropper. But usually we know the volume that we add, and we also know the molarity of this solution. So in other words, we typically know one molarity, we know one and one volume, we know that pair. We know the volume that we add, and we can use that to find the molarity, typically through M1V1 equals M2V2, um, I, but you also can do um, solution stoichiometry to get there. But this is the science, and we've done this, but now we're going to use this to talk about pH curves, okay, and how pH changes when you either add a base to an acid or add an, an acid to a base. And that's the premise that we're going to be focused on today. All right, so remember, a titration formal fancy definition is to find the concentration of a solution using a solution of known concentration, or in other words, M1V1 equals M2V2, and you're usually looking for one of the molarities. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Um, an analyte is the solution with the unknown concentration. The titrant or titrant is what you would do, what you know what um, you know. I always remember you titrate something with a titrant. That's how I remember that. Probably totally saying that wrong. Okay, stoichiometric equivalence point is usually marked by the endpoint of an indicator. Okay, now we're going to use indicators, um, and we're going to come back to this in 15.5, but indicators are going to change color. Okay, remember we've seen phenolphthalein um, as an indicator when the reaction has reached its endpoint, and we've used some redox titrators as well. Okay, a pH curve is also called a titration curve. It's a plot of pH versus the amount of titrant added. So it's usually, and I'm going to show you a sketch here, it's usually pH versus some type of volume, usually milliliters or liters or whatever we're adding in there. Um, titrations usually involve very small quantities and typically the mole is too large, so we use millimole. Now don't get thrown off by this. The only thing that we're doing, and you remember we've done some graphs where we've done um, you know, time divided by a thousand to just make it easier to graph. We just are using millimoles, and then we use milliliters. So molarity is exactly the same. Um, it's still a representation of moles per liter, and the millis can cancel out. So don't get thrown by the milli. It's just one one thousandth. It's just a smaller unit. Um, for titration examples, the things that you're going to have to know is you're going to have to know um, calculations and graph patterns for each example. And I'm going to I'm going to do one example and I know this is a big page range. Actually, it should be 7 I think it may have been corrected on your notes, but right now it should be 729 to 744. I know it's a lot of pages. It's not heavy duty reading as much as them walking you through all these different examples. So you got to spend some time go back and read this in the textbook and be able to reference what these changes are. But the combinations are when you combine titrate a strong acid and a strong base, when you titrate a weak acid and a strong base, and a weak base and a strong acid. And again, what we're looking for is pH, um, not looking for, looking at, is pH um, typically versus volume. And you're going to see there's going to be two patterns. Um, you're either going to start with an acid and eventually add enough base to get it to be basic because remember our base values are up here for pH acid um, with that cutoff of 7. So this is if you start with an acid and you titrate it with a base. The opposite is going to happen if you have a base where you're going to start with a high pH, titrate it with an acid until you reach that um, acidic environment. So see if we can follow along with the math. All right, so for strong acid and strong base, what we're going to do is we are going to, here's the setup. We are titrating 50 milliliters of a 0.2 molar nitric acid 
solution with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Now, I know you may be going, well, we know both concentrations, and you're right. Now we're using titrations to look at the change in pH, okay? So at the very beginning, this is the beginning point, there's been no sodium hydroxide added, so the pH is only from the nitric acid. Um, it is a strong acid, so it will completely dissociate, so the pH is 0.699, or really, really acidic, okay, because we are less than one. Um, now what we're going to do is go ahead and add 10 mils of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we kind of have to do um, our ice table almost sort of becomes a stoichiometry table because we know it's totally going to react. And just as a reminder, the chemistry that we've got here, if we have nitric acid um, and sodium hydroxide, Nitrate is always soluble, sodium is always soluble, they're spectators. So the chemistry that we're doing here is we're getting hydrogen plus hydroxide to give us water. So here's our hydrogen plus hydroxide gives us water. Remember our nitric nitrate is gone and our sodium is gone. So we're going to use millimoles um, just because it's just, like I said, it's simpler. So you've got, and to get millimoles, you just keep the milliliter value. Okay, you don't have to change it any at all. But So now we've got 50 mils. So just to show you how this works out, um, times 0.2 uh, molarity. So what we end up with is 10 millimoles. The minus 1, okay, I'm going to show you where that comes in. Because if I come over here to hydroxide, I've got 10 mils of sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0.1 molar. So that means I have 1.0 millimoles of hydroxide. So those 1 millimole is going to react with the, hydro with the hydrogen ion and I'm going to be left with 9 millimoles of hydrogen floating around and no hydroxide because it's all going to be used up, it's going to completely react. So the pH is going to raise to about 0.82. Okay, and remember if we think about graph wise we've got pH so we may have had you know 0 0.69, 0 0.82 really isn't going up that much further. We're going to, I'm going to show you a graph at the end of this. Okay, now we keep doing these sequential adding of things. So now we're going to ha have 20 mils of sodium hydroxide added. This number doesn't ever change because it's what you started with. Okay, you started with 50 mils of 0.2 molar nitric acid, so we still go back to the beginning of those 10 millimoles every time. Now we're going to have 2.0 millimoles of sodium hydroxide because we added 20 mils total. So again, this is kind of a stoichiometry chart only from the fact that this is what we're starting with, this is how much is being used, and this is how much is left over. So now we have 8 millimoles. Those 8 millimoles, we have to use our new total volumes. Okay, I think I did that on the last slide and just forgot to explain it. So the total volume comes from the fact that we had 50 mils of the nitric, and then we added 20 mils of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that's where that 70 came from. Now the pH has climbed up to 0.94. So you can see the hydroxide is starting to use up some of that hydrogen ion. It's starting to neutralize it. Now we've got 50 mils of sodium hydroxide. Okay, I have my 10 millimoles to start with. Now I've got 50 mils of the sodium hydroxide. So now I've got 5 millimoles of the sodium hydroxide floating around. So all five of those are going to react with the 10 millimoles and leave me only 5 millimoles of... Um, hydrogen ion to influence the pH. So again, I divide by the new total volume, which is going to give me a pH of 1.3. Okay, so again, I'm starting to tick up here just a little bit. All right, then we're going to add 100 mils of sodium hydroxide. So when we add the 100 mils, we finally have 10 millimoles of hydrogen and 10 millimoles of hydroxide so we truly have zero left of either and since there's zero left of either this is 7.0 which is exactly at the equivalence point so at this point we have gone up from a pH level to and we start to we'll stabilize here so here is our 7 is our equivalence point okay which is exactly when all everything has reacted now we're past the equivalence point. So that means instead of extra hydrogen ion that's going to be around to influence the pH, we're going to have extra hydroxide ion that's going to influence the pH. So again, if the one, this 10 still hasn't changed because we haven't added any or nitric acid, but now we have 15 millimoles of hydroxide. And so remember, all the, 
we have to subtract from it is the 10, mol 10 millimoles of hydrogen ion that we started with. So now we have 5 millimoles of um, hydroxide left. So this time, remember, hydroxide, um, you can either find pOH or you can um, then subtract it from 14, but our pH value is going to be 12.40. So once we flip that equivalence point up here, now we're starting to come out this way on the more basic side. Okay, and once we get past that, you know, way past that equivalence point, it starts to stabilize in the other direction. So this is now just that graph that I was talking about, where this is our graphical representation of the fact that, um, you know, we started with our strong acid, and as we added more base, added more base, here's our equivalence point, and the graph kind of changes its inflection here, and then it starts to go over until where we get to um, the basic side. Okay, and you get very gradual changes until you get close to the equivalence point, and then just to demonstrate this, you're talking about one one hundredth of a milliliter that makes it jump from 5.3 to 7, and then one one hundredth of a milliliter that gets it to jump from 7.0 to 8.7. So this goes very, 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 very fast here. Okay, so because they have strong influences on them. All right, now we're going to look at.